Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. In 1919, Jackie Coogan became the first major star in American movie history when he appeared alongside Charlie Chaplin in The Kid. He would later go on to captivate a different generation as Uncle Fester in The Addams Family, and the patriarch influenced Hollywood in other ways. How Jackie Coogan's mother stole four million dollars from him. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. A millionaire child who was beaten to the ends by his own parents. Jackie Coogan was the first child star who was actually a child. Cast at six by Charles Chaplin to co-star in The Kid, he soon had a million dollar contract at Metro. Like so many kid actors, Coogan outgrew his precocious appeal, and when he reached maturity in the 1930s, he asked his mother and stepfather for the four million dollars or so he had earned in movies. They said no, as a minor he had no legal claim to his riches. The California legislature soon passed the Child Actors Bill, also known as the Coogan Act, which mandated trust funds for kids in show business. Coogan received only $126,000 of his stash, and later gave this advice to child actors. Stay away from mothers. In 1931, the year before Shirley Temple broke into movies, Jackie starred in The Champ with Wallace Beery and Skippy with Robert Coogan. Jackie Coogan's seven-year-old brother. For the latter, he received an Oscar nomination for Best Actor. He remains the youngest nominee in that category. Cooper survived child stardom to headline his own TV series, Hesesi, and to win two Emmys for directing M.A.S.H. and The White Shadow. Yet when his young son was to sign an MGM contract, Cooper overruled the boy's mother, saying, It's no way for a kid to grow up. Coogan starred in the film as an adorable orphan, informally adopted by Chaplin's little tramp, who is almost permanently separated from his scrappy caregiver by unfeeling child service employees. As Hollywood's first child superstar, Coogan was given a haircut to make visual his maturation from his famed persona as an orphaned waif into a leading man. The haircut was also linked to larger concerns about the so-called flaming youth of the lost generation what was known as Americanism, and identity construction for both child and parental roles. Unfortunately for Coogan, fans refused to accept his makeover. His screen persona in public memory contributed to the decline of his career, while concurrently protecting the kid from a vilified mother. Let's examine Jackie's social transition from boyhood into manhood during the 1920s. Jackie Coogan was born in a family of theatre actors in Los Angeles in 1914. He was born into a family of vaudevillians. His father was a dancer and his mother had been a child star. From a young age, the boy began an acting career and his outstanding talent made him a millionaire. On the stage by age four, Jackie was touring at age five with his family. Coogan spent the first three years of his life primarily in the care of relatives though he did appear in one film with his mother as an infant, Skinner's Baby. When he was a toddler, his parents took him on the road with them. Coogan started to do imitations and dance steps, and his father brought him on stage one night for a curtain call. The audience's response to Coogan's charming appearances compelled the tour promoter to insist that young Coogan become part of the act, for which the family was paid extra. When the vaudeville show made its way to Los Angeles, up-and-coming director-comedian Charlie Chaplin caught the act. Chaplin was looking for a child actor and decided that young Coogan fitted the bill. Chaplin gave him $75 a week role in The Kid. When the film was finished, he received a $5,000 bonus. Then came Peck's Bad Boy at $1,000 a week, followed by a $500,000 Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer contract with a clause guaranteeing him 60% of the profits from such pictures as Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. The Kid launched his career that would span over 50 years. He had made 19 films before his 18th birthday, and became one of the first heavily merchandised celebrities. 
After making his stage debut at the age of 16 months, he earned between two and four million dollars before he was out of short pants. Normal boy, he said in the 1972 interview, how would I know what a normal boy would do? When I was seven, we bought a big house at the corner of Wilshire and Weston and put in one of the earliest swimming pools in Southern California. Being who I was, I had the best swimming instructor, Duke Kahanamoku, the year after he won the Olympics. I surfed from Baya, California to San Francisco when there were only nine or ten surfers on the entire Pacific coast. I drank milk from my own ranch. Other boys went to see Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth came to see me. But his life unravelled months before his 21st birthday. After a day of dove hunting in Mexico, the car his father was driving was forced off the road. The young actor was badly bruised, and his father and three other passengers were killed. Coogan said later that the rest of his life would have been different if his father had survived. The reason was money. Coogan became a stage actor in 1937 and estimated in 1966 that he had appeared in 35 silent films, 100 talkies and 850 television programs, including more than 65 episodes of The Addams Family. His Uncle Fester character in that series would stuff a light bulb in his mouth and make it glow. As Coogan reached adolescence in the late 1920s, his popularity began to decline. He continued to make movies on his Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer contract until it ended in 1928. The more successful films included A Boy of Flanders, The Ragman and Johnny Get Your Gun. In the latter, Coogan's now famous Dutch boy haircut was sheared into a more mature look. During this time, Coogan performed in a stage show with his father. He also concentrated on his education. Until the age of 10, Coogan was tutored. He then attended Urban Military Academy as well as other prep schools. After graduation, Cougar attended several colleges, including Villanova and University of Southern California. Poor grades forced him to leave Santa Clara University in 1932. Coogan made a couple of films for Paramount, including Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. While he was a talented actor, there was not much of an audience for his films. Coogan agreed to make short features for the low-budget Talisman Studio in 1933. In World War II, Coogan joined the Army as a flight officer and was the first glider pilot to land Allied troops behind the Japanese lines in Burma. If you think the natives were surprised when our gliders landed, he said, you should have seen them when we opened up the mouth of one and drove out a jeep. He was later awarded the Air Medal for meritorious service. After returning to the United States, Coogan continued his civic duty, appearing in war bond drives in 1946. He also tried to restart his career in entertainment, though he also worked in sales and produced an ice show. Coogan began appearing in nightclubs and toured with an orchestra. He eventually made his way back to film and later television, but was never able to recapture the success of his early career. He developed a drinking problem and was arrested for drunk driving. It is alleged that Coogan also had a drug problem and was arrested for marijuana possession. Though he played mainly supporting roles in movies of low to medium quality after the 1940s, he made numerous guest appearances on television. He even received an Emmy Award nomination for a 1956 role in an episode of Playhouse 90. In the mid-1960s, Coogan portrayed Uncle Fester in the short-lived The Addams Family television series. Though it only ran for two years, the series still airs on TV, in syndication and on streaming services, and has been adapted into multiple movies, reunions, sequels, animated series and Broadway shows. Though he was initially rejected, Coogan desperately wanted the role and went to great lengths to resemble the cartoon character. Coogan had previously been a regular on the shows Cowboy G-Men and McKeever and the Colonel. He made his last movie in 1980, playing a small role in The Escape Artist. We're used to sad tales of former child stars getting taken advantage of by their less than ethical stage parents. The phenomenon even has its own cutesy portmanteau, the momager. But back in the 1930s, Jackie Coogan struck a blow for child stars everywhere when he filed a suit against his mother and stepfather 
to seek a portion of his hard-earned millions only to be told the two had spent it all on fur coats, diamonds and luxury cars. Coogan's real-life parents turned out to be a lot less sympathetic than Chaplin's surrogate father character. After Coogan turned 21, he was forced to investigate a lengthy and heartbreaking legal battle with his mother and stepfather when they refused to share with him the generous amount of money he had earned as a child actor on Chaplin's film. He asked his mother for the money that had allegedly been held in trust for him. He had earned at least $4 million over the course of his career. She refused, arguing that parents were entitled to all of their children's earnings. He was completely cut off by her and given only $1,000. Coogan's mother lived in a house that he had paid for with her second husband, Arthur Bernstein, the family's lawyer and financial advisor. Of the millions he had made as a child star, all he ever received was a weekly allowance of $6.25. His mother Lillian and the family lawyer whom she had married announced that they would not turn any of it over to him. The law is on our side, and Jackie Coogan will not get a cent from his past earnings. In 1938, Coogan took legal action against his mother, claiming the assets of his company, Jackie Coogan Productions. He wanted a full financial accounting of his earnings, his mother and stepfather fought him all the way, though public opinion was on Coogan's side. Some who testified on Coogan's behalf emphasised that his father had promised to leave the money to his son. The legal wranglings deeply affected Coogan's life. He claimed that his stepfather, who had many Hollywood connections, made it difficult for him to find work in films. Coogan did a stage tour with Bob Hope, however. He also found other stage work in New York and in summer stock. As a child actor, Coogan's mother and stepfather were in charge of his earnings. The family lived large off Coogan's paydays, and when finally of age he asked that he be privy to his nest egg. Sadly, the money was all gone, and there was nothing he could do about it. The truly bizarre case made headlines across the US, with Coogan's stepfather telling Life magazine, Every dollar a kid earns before he is 21 belongs to his parents. Jackie will not get a cent of his earnings. The settlement from the suit was finalised in 1940, with Coogan and his mother splitting the remaining assets. Coogan received half of $250,000, which was soon gone as he settled debts. Coogan and his mother later reconciled, and his lack of funds compelled him to move back into the family home. Though Coogan only walked away without much from the civil suit after legal fees, the publicity surrounding the case resulted in the passage of the California Child Actors Bill, which safeguards a percentage of all child actors' earnings until the age of 21. Thanks to Coogan, the California Child Actors Bill was enacted in 1939, requiring that 15% of a child star's earnings be set aside in a trust, among other important regulations. Momagers beware! 48 hours after I filed my suit, they rushed a new law through the legislature, he said. The measure said that all juvenile actors' earnings had to be deposited in court-administered trust funds. Because of this scandal, the state of California enacted the Coogan Act, and now every child entertainer is required to see some funds delivered into a Coogan account from any paying production company. After a childhood of virtually unquestioning obedience, Mr. Coogan agonised for two years before deciding to file suit to recover the money, blackballed by the studios. It was the lowest point of my life, he said in 1972, because my stepfather was related to many people and I was blackballed by the studios. His anxiety was compounded by the disintegration of his first marriage to a young starlet named Betty Grable. Eighteen months later, when the lawsuit was settled, he was left with only $35,000, but with the knowledge that such a situation could not recur. After suffering from heart and kidney ailments, Coogan succumbed to heart failure on March 1, 1984, in Santa Monica, California. He was survived by fourth wife, Dorothea Lamphere, and four children, Anthony, Chris, Joan, and Leslie. Later, one grandson, Keith Coogan, came to some prominence as a young actor in his own right. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Jackie Coogan?